Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of scripting tutorials for Roblox. And today we're going to be learning about if else statements. So first, what I want to hammer in your guys' brain is what even is a condition? Because a condition is important when writing if else statements. So what is a condition, right? It can either be true or false, which is like a Boolean. And if you haven't watched my past episodes, I went over variable types last episode. This episode, we'll be stacking upon information with that. So this is a if statement, okay? If condition, then there you go. This is your if statements right here. So this condition is can either be true or false. All right. That's what. So if it's true, then it runs this code. If it's false, then it doesn't run that code. So we're going to be talking about more on how this works, like anything in between this if and then part of the code. So we're going to go over what the condition is operators are first so like how you make a condition i have it like pre-written okay so we got double equals so if we were to use the condition operators in a statement like a if else then statement then we would be comparing the left to the right so if let's say five equals five five equals five so we're comparing the left side to the right side and that's where our condition operators would be so this uh, this left side is 5, this right side is 5. We can say if 5 is greater than 5, if 5 is greater than or equal to 5, if 5 is less than 5, if 5 then is, if five is less than or equal to 5. Sorry, there's also a, another condition operator, which is if 5 is not equal to 5, then. So we can use not equal to. We're not going to be going over not and or or right now. We'll do it in the next or we'll do it later in the video. So, yeah, just wanted to give you guys a heads up that we're not going to be skipping over this. But yeah, now we'll go over these equal greater than greater equal to less than less than or equal to right now. So I'll uh, have this up. So for your guys' reference and things like that, you know, we write a condition. This can either be true or false. So remember how if statement looks like if condition then we run it so if this is true so five equals five which is true five does not equal six right five is not equal to six so it turns to false five is greater than six that is false uh five is less than six that is true five is greater than or equal to since you know five can be equal to five that's true five greater than or equal to six that is false five less than or equal to six that is true because, you know, 5 is smaller than 6, okay? And 5 is less than or equal to 5. That is true. Hopefully, you guys got the conditions out of the way. So, let's say, let's use variables here. We're going to have a local condition and a true condition. So, these are going to be like real life examples, okay? This true condition is always going to be true. This false condition is always going to be false. Remember that you can replace this with this. Since 5 equals 5, this is going to be true. Or you can grab a, you know, false value. 5 is equal to 6. And that is going to be a false value. But we're just going to use true and false for here. Because, you know, we can set it to booleans. And that is actually going to work right here. So this is how you write your first true conditions. And here you go. So your example one, if your true condition runs then this will print out but since this is a false condition right since it's false this is not going to run so if we run it here we're going to take out everything except the logs so if we actually run the script we're going to see that this will go through in the output here so example one which is true but this is false because you know we have a if condition then it's going to be false so now we have more examples. Pretty cool. So now we're going to go if else. All right. And what does an if else thing look like? All right. So if false condition. So if this is false, this is going to be false. So nothing in this code is going to run. So we're going to have this else statement right here. If then else end. Okay. So we're going to see that it runs the else statement instead of this false condition. So it's, you know, it's either do this or you can do this. So since this is false, we'll just do it. So now 
Let's look at something that is true condition, actually. Let's use our true condition here. If true. So it's going to say, oh, look, if true. You know, since this condition runs, this won't ever run. You see, it doesn't run this and also this. It only runs one block of code. Now we'll go on to if and then else if statements, okay? So what does that mean? You see this false condition right here? This is never going to run. Well, we know why it's not going to run because it's false, right? Now we'll use if else. This is true condition. So the else if is true. So we can like combine a bunch of if statements in one big if statements by using the else if statement right here. So else if is true. So this is where that comes from. And that is our example number four. So let's go on to example number five. Here's example number five. This is false, right? And this is false. So it'll go to this else. That's what happens when else if is also false, you know? We have multiple if statements being false. So then what happens here? Then we got example five else. Because this is false, this is false, so it runs through the else statement. So this is how you can make bigger. You can do if, else if, and then if you want, you can put another else, else if, and then your condition, and then then. You know, you, you gotta have a condition here though. Like you can make it a true condition or, or whatnot. Then this will run. So let's say this is both true, actually. So what is it gonna run? You know? We're going to say if false number two. So one and two. Okay, so this is true. All right. Hopefully I have that correctly. Okay, so we have the first true. So it's going to run false one because it reads it in order. This is not going to run because this one is always going to run. Okay. It's going to run because anything higher than your if statements it's going to run the one that comes before it. It just reads like up to down. And so this will never execute because this is going to be always true. It's going to see, it's going to run the first true condition that it can find basically. So basically there's a true table in, um, in computer science and stuff. So we have the and operator. So you have your condition one and your condition two and your condition one is can either be true or false. So a condition is true or false, right? So if we use and, then we're combining two conditions together. Okay. And your and says, if this is false and this is false, then the outcome. So this outcome right here, if your condition, then, then this condition will be false right here so this is where it's going to be and it's not going to run this code now we got true and false which makes it false because it's an and you need both conditions to be true because you know and and conditions so this is going to be false false true is also false the only thing that makes it true is if both conditions are true then that makes it true so now we go to the or operator this condition or another condition okay let's say condition one right and your condition one can be like this condition one or condition two okay so if both is false then it's false but if at least one is true then your outcome will become true and if this is false this is true then this is true if both of it is true then it's going to be still true because at least one needs to be true for your code to run. Oh, and if you put not condition, so let's say this condition one is true. If you put not in, uh, in the front, so not, not condition one. So it's just going to inverse what either your outcome is. So let's say condition one is true right now. If we put not, in front of condition one, then it turns to false. So it switches the truthy value. So then we got the not, all right? We got the not five is greater than six. So what is five greater than six? We had it false. 
Now, if we put not, it turns into true. Now we got the and right here. We got the and, five equals five. Well, this is true. This is true, right? But now five equals equals six. This is false. So if we go back to our truth table on the and operator, uh, true and false does not equal, this is true, this is false, it equals false. True, false, false, okay? Now we look at this, five equals five, which is true. Five is less than six, which is true. So five less than six appear true, then it would equal to true because both values are true for the and operator. And now we gotta go to here. Five equals five or five equals six. Well, look at this table, right? We are using this or condition, right? So this condition right here is our condition number one. This is our condition number two. So five equals five, that's true. So technically this would just skip everything of like past or it doesn't really care what this is since this is true. All right, so then it equals to true. This is five equals five or five is less than six. Well, both of it is true. So we're gonna say it's true. Now five equals six, that is false. Five is greater than six, that is also false. So that's false. All right, so hopefully you guys understand like how the condition operators work and how you combine not and or or with it, right? So that's how you make your basic condition. So here's another example. If not true condition, will this run? If not true condition, what does that mean? Not true means you switch this true and you say false. So this is, you know, it's not going to run. Your number seven, if true and true, what is, is this going to run? So yeah, example seven um, is true and true. So that's what happens when you use two ands together. Okay. And here is another one. If true or false, if true or false, you guys know that, uh, previously true or false this is equal to true hopefully you know you've learned that from before and example eight so that is cool and that is basically all that you need to know for if else david and things like that and you don't really need to know all this code i'm just like showing you uh what the power of if else statements can do here we go where are blue part red part green part white part so it's going to be this one in the workspace uh, blue part, green part, red part, white part, and we are referencing it over there. So now we make a, uh, I didn't teach you guys functions, but here's where like practical uses are. If, else, if, and else, okay? So if we touch the green part, then the white part, so if we touch this green part, then the white part will become the green part color, okay? So if we touch the green part, it's gonna turn to green part. If we touch the red part, then we're going to change our brick color into the red part brick color. If we touch the, so we got green, we got red, we got blue part. So if blue is touched, red is touched, green is touched, then it fires this function. And that is going to actually run for us. So this is a practical use of if else statements. If we touch the red part, you know, right here, if, well, if we touch red part, then it turns red. If we touch green part, it turns green. Else, this is gonna be our else statement. You know, else blue part is gonna turn blue, you know. I mean, hopefully you guys can see like the power of if else statements and things like that. So yeah, that's pretty fun. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the next episode. Peace.